Yeah, I could really go nuts and bring a trailer, so uh, I'm having to kind of pace myself. Hi, I'm John Hennessy from Hennessy Performance, and I've been building fast cars since 1991, and I've got a few cars from my own personal collection behind me, and would love to share a little bit about those cars with you, so come take a look. Our friends at Penzl share a similar passion for cars. In this exclusive tour, I'll share my unwavering love for cars and the Penzl products that keep them running at peak performance. All right, so this is my 1969 Olds 442 convertible that my lovely wife and kids gave to me for my birthday last year when I turned 60. This is a much finer example of my first car that I bought with my own money. I barely turned 16. My dad was an insurance adjuster and he was working with a body shop and they had a four screen 69 Olds 442 convertible. He told me that he could buy really cheap, like this is like $200 back in the late 70s. And he's like, this is gonna be my first car. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. And the next thing I know, a few weeks later, I'm like, dad, what's up with that car? And then I noticed the neighbor across the street owned the car. And I realized that, okay, maybe dad needed the money more than I needed the car. And in the spring, I had a pretty nice little motorcycle wreck, got a hole in my right knee, spent a week in the hospital. And as I was recovering, I was trying to fix my bike. And my neighbor across the street, super nice guy, worked at the local Ford factory in Kansas City, um, offered to help me fix my bike, fix my bike. And I said, hey, is there any chance I could trade you my two motorcycles for your 442 plus some money? And that's the deal that we did. The day that I got it, I popped the hood open. I took the lid off of the air box, flipped it upside down to get a little more air into the uh, intake, into the carburetor. So that was probably one of my first uh, modifications to a car. Getting in this car and being able to put the top band and cruise around brings me back to like when I was in Kansas City and I was in my teens. So this is a 1991 Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4. I bought this off a of Bring a Trailer a couple summers ago. This car is identical to the car that I bought back in 1991. Modified it, took it and raced it at, at Pikes Peak. I raced it at the Bonneville Salt Flats and set a, a record for the F production supercharged class. It was only 177 miles an hour back then, but still that was fast for a three liter. Drove the car to Bonneville, drove it home from Bonneville, drove it to Pikes Peak, drove it home from Pikes Peak. The 3000 GT was my attempt at building my poor man's version of a Porsche 959. In 91, uh, Silver State had a race in May called the Nevada Open Road Classic. I got fourth place overall on my modified 3000 GT. I averaged 164 miles an hour for a 90 mile race. so took me 34 minutes to go 90 miles. That car is probably rusted out from the outside in because of all the salt that it received from Bonneville. This one's stock, I've not modified it, I'm probably not going to modify it. Brings back great memories from the early 90s when we started the business. Okay, this is my 2005 Dodge Viper. It's a Gen 3 convertible. It has our Venom 1000 twin turbo upgrade with upgraded wheels, tires, brakes, suspension, it's lowered. Uh, Venom 1000, so it's the twin turbo V10. It's a total torque monster. This is a car that I built for a gentleman from Colorado. His name's Dave Leniger. He's the founder of Remax Real Estate. I met him at Barrett Jackson back in 2004, 2005. Built this car for him. Then fast forward to a couple years ago, a mutual friend of ours said, hey look, if you're gonna build a Roadster version of the F5, Mr. Leniger would be interested in, in buying one of those. So he ordered the car, we spec this car, and through the process, he said, hey John, I've got, still have your twin turbo Viper, would you wanna take it and trade towards the Venom F5 Roadster? I said, sure. So we delivered his Roadster at the Quail uh, during car week in 2022. Very proudly, we're able to take his twin turbo Venom 1000 back in trade. It brings back a lot of great memories of drag racing, street racing, a lot of high pressure car magazine shootouts. This car's very popular with my boys. They all kind of fight on who gets to drive it on, on Saturday morning to go out and eat Mexican breakfast. Very special part of our collection. All right, this is my 2014 Cadillac CTSV wagon with the manual transmission, very rare. Again, I bought this up for Bring a Trailer. It seems like I bought half a dozen cars from Bring a Trailer last year, so I'm thinking I'm a little bit of BAT uh, lockdown for right now, but uh, got a good deal on it. Silver's always kind of been my color for something I want to drive fast because 
Number one, when it's dirty, it doesn't look dirty. And when you're going fast down the road, it doesn't stand out quite as much as something that's bright red or yellow. So I had a, a, a CTSV wagon similar to this manual that I'd modified up to about 750 horsepower. And then I put nitrous on top of that. I called it the hammer wagon. And I, if I went through one bottle of nitrous in that thing, I went through 100 bottles of nitrous on that thing. I raced the crap out of that car. I held the Texas mile record for the CTSV for quite a while. Ran 190 miles an hour in the standing mile. Drove it from Houston, drove it down to South Texas and back. To wake it up a little bit, we put some ex electronic exhaust dump valves back behind the headers before the mufflers. So when I would take the kids to pick them up from grade school or drop them off in the morning, they'd be like, hey, dad, 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 open up the dumps, open up the dumps. And it would literally go from looking like, you know, soccer mom, station wagon, to sounding like, you know, Ricky Bobby in Talladega Nights. Fun car with uh, a lot of great memories from modifying cars. All right, so this is a Venom F5 that I spec'd out for myself about a year and a half ago. And uh, I've always loved the pearl white, like on the Maserati MC12 with the blue accents, as well as I've always thought that the NASA T38s with the white, with the, with the blue, is very, very cool. When I originally built it, it was, a, it was a coupe, and I went ahead and added our Revolution package to it. So it's got the upgraded front splitter, the canards, the roof scoop and the rear wing and the updated calibrations for the Revolution. So thinking about putting the car and bring a trailer, uh, I've got another F5 that I'm building for the family collection. So we'll see, may keep it, may sell it, not sure what I wanna do with it. So as far as the kind of what's the foundation of the Hennessy collection, I think ultimately it's, it's cars that reflect my personality, our family's personality. Honestly, that's the DNA of our company. You know, everything here is cars that we've taken and modified from some level of performance to a higher level of performance. And, and I think in the case of the F5, it's our own expression of our own car from the ground up. When I drive a car like the F5, it's something I never get used to. It's when you squeeze into the throttle in second, third gear at 1800 horsepower with 3000 pounds of curb weight, it's just so mind bendingly fast and a little borderline scary, that's just something I never get used to. So to drive these cars, they, they all deliver uh, a passion and performance that in the case of this car especially, can't really be described in words. So I um, feel very special to be a, a part of this process, to have so many great, uh, talented co-workers that have helped execute my dreams over the years. It's been, been a lot of fun to share this with you guys. Came here for the horsepower.